So things have been rather different and let's face it, sh** in 2020. But one thing that most definitely has not changed is the sheer number of smartphones that Motorola has spaffed out across the past 12 months. And I've personally covered, I think it's over a dozen of the buggers right here on Techspert. So here's my roundup and run through of the very best Motorola mobiles that you can pick up as we hit 2021, from crazy expensive bendy blowers all the way down to your more budget friendly options. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now, if your wallet is proper fit to burst and you want something with a good bit of flair, then definitely have a gander at Motorola's super slick new Razer 5G. This all new reimagining of the classic flip phone sports a 6.2 inch OLED screen, which can fold in half with zero creasing. And when it's all closed up, the Motorola Razor 5G is ridiculously tiny, so you can shove it anywhere you like. Most bodily orifices included, but not medically sanctioned. Plus that teensy second screen means you can check your notifications and use most apps without having to unfurl this clever wee chappy. The first Motorola Razor reboot came out in Christmas 2019 when that actually was a Christmas and it got us all excited and a bit hot under the collar but then unfortunately it proved to be a bit of a mixed bag when you were actually using the thing. But thankfully Motorola has spruced up that original handset and upgraded the specs for this 5G model. So now for instance power is provided by a Snapdragon 765G chipset backed by 8 gigs of RAM. You've also got an improved 48 megapixel primary camera. Battery life is sadly still a bit pants, which isn't ideal if you actually enjoy using your phone in the evenings. Plus, yeah, the Razer also has an annoying iPhone-style notch that sticks right into whatever you're watching. But if your main priority in life is to raise a few eyebrows whenever you whip your smartphone out of your pocket, then definitely job done. But if you're not absolutely minted or you want a slightly sane smartphone, then I'm still a big fan of Motorola's 2020 flagship phone, the Moto Edge. And the Edge will still cost you around 500 quid direct from Motorola at the time that I shot this video, but if you shop around a bit, you'll often find it slightly reduced in other areas. This blacker than black handset is sadly constructed from plastic, unlike most other flagships, which may be harder to crack but it does pick up scratches all too easily so you'll definitely want to slap on a case. Like all Motorola smartphones the Moto Edge boasts a lovely stock version of Android with a couple of genuinely useful bonus features chucked on top. And yeah 100% my favourite of the bunch is still that Kung Fu Chop Torch effort. You've also got nifty gaming tools and other gesture controls plus some face unlock to back up the in-display fingerprint sensor all of which enhances the overall Android experience. And if you're into your movies and shows then the Edge is really going to polish your brass knobs. That curvy OLED screen is a 6.7 inch Full HD Plus beast, 7 up sharp visuals, 90 hertz smoothness and punchy colours with only a teeny pinhole cam to blot your view. Qualcomm's Snapdragon 765G chipset once again provides the grunt, so you can game away as merrily as you like with a smooth frame rate and sharp visuals on games like Call of Duty and PUBG Mobile. And it goes just like on the Motorola Razr 5G as well. You've got that built-in 5G connectivity courtesy of the 765G chipset, so you can jump on those next-gen super nippy networks if you've got the right contract. Rounding off the Edge's specs is a 4,500 milliamp battery that delivers a full day of intensive use, no worries, plus 128 gigs of storage that's expandable via microSD. And I got on pretty well with Motorola's 64 meg primary camera too, even if it's not quite as good as the Pixel Cam for trickier conditions. And here it's backed by a basic ultra wide angle and telephoto snapper, which are limited, but at least they add a bit of flexibility when needed. Now in the States and some other regions, Motorola also launched the Moto Edge Plus, which is basically a Billy Big Bollocks version of that flagship handset with upgraded specs. You get the likes of the Snapdragon 865 instead of the 765G, but sadly the Edge Plus never made it to Blighty, so I never got a chance to test it out. But that is undoubtedly the Motorola smartphone of 2020 that packs the most grunt, so if you're intrigued then definitely go check out some reviews from my US cousins and see what you think. Now, say that you want a smartphone with solid specs and you're interested in that 5G connectivity that you find on the Motorola Razr and the Motorola Edge as well, but you don't have enough cash to make it rain, perhaps a light drizzle at best. Well, the much cheaper alternative to those handsets is the Moto G 5G Plus, which is personally one of my favourite motor phones of 2020. This sports Qualcomm's very capable Snapdragon 765 chipset, which is a small step down from the 765G in GPU terms, but I still found that I could merrily game away on whatever I fancied, just as I could with the Moto Edge. And if anything, the flat display here makes it better suited to gaming compared with Motorola's flagship. 
You still get that slick stock Android experience with all of Modworld's bonus bits chucked on there, including that gaming mode for blocking notifications and hoarding resources. And yes, unsurprisingly, given the name, the Moto G 5G Plus has full 5G support, courtesy again of that 765 platform. The 6.7 inch Full HD Plus IPS screen is still big enough to comfortably describe as effing massive, and while it's not OLED tech, it's still a stunner. You've got sharp contrast with HDR10 support and natural looking colours, plus a 20 one by nine cinema wide design which serves up a proper widescreen view of your games or movies and you've still got a glorious bit of 90 hertz refresh rate action as well so whizzing about in your desktops and supported apps is smooth as out battery life is proper good too with a 5000 milliamp cell stuffed inside here while the 48 megapixel primary camera does a bang up job with everyday snaps the Moto g 5g plus is slightly irked by tougher shooting conditions but can produce good looking everyday photos with a little bit of care complete with motor rollers ai smarts and that rather decent light mode a little bit further down the motor roller moto g series ranks is the still very bloody lovely moto g9 plus you once again have an IPS screen here, but this time it's an even more flippin' massive 6.8 incher. And it's a bit of a blinder too, pumping out natural looking visuals with HDR10 Plus support on top, although there is no variable refresh rate to speak of. Performance is still pretty smooth thanks to the Snapdragon 730G chipset with that capable Adreno 618 GPU. And Moto's gaming tools make for a satisfying PUBG or Call of Duty experience. And this is the first of Motorola's Plus branded handsets to come with a whopping 5000 milliamp battery which is only just edged out by the G9 Power's 6000 milliamp effort. This package is rounded off by a perfectly respectable 64 meg primary camera backed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle effort plus some macro and depth sensor shenanigans ugh. and it's all perfectly fine for everyday shooting even in fairly testing conditions. Now if you find that your budget is proper tight and you've got less than 200 quid to spend on your new smartphone, no worries, Motorola still has you covered with its Moto G series. Check out the Moto G9 Power which cost around 160 quid at the time I shot this video direct from Motorola and it comes packed in that aforementioned 6000 milliamp battery. You thought that 6.8 inch G9 Plus was big? Well the G9 Power is just as chuffing huge, this time with an HD display that isn't quite as crisp but it's still very good for the cost. The specs take another bump down with a Snapdragon 662 that's fine for everyday shenanigans. And you can even get stuck into some light gaming if you want to blow off some steam by blowing off someone else's face. Eat that you stupid child person. But of course the true star of the show here on the G9 Power is definitely that 6000 milliamp battery which will comfortably give you a couple of days of use between charges as long as you don't go too mental so you can have a nice long weekend away and not even bother to pack your charger. Like the G9 Plus, you also have a 64 meg camera with AI smarts and the usual motor modes for night shots, portrait snaps and so on. In all, it's a proper good package for a very respectable price. And for even less cash, you can grab yourself a Moto G9 Play, which isn't quite so freaking enormous, thankfully. In fact, at 6.5 inches, it's almost compact. Once again, this is a plastic blower offering little in the way of frills or flair, but the performance gets a gold star with that same Snapdragon 662 chipset and 4 gigs of RAM as the power. And yeah, sure, the G9 Play's 5000 milliamp battery isn't quite as impressively ridiculously huge as the G9 Powers, but it's still more than capacious enough, capacious is that a word? It is now, to give you a full day and a half, or maybe even just about stretching to two days of use between charges. And the G9 Play isn't bad for media streaming either, with the respectable 720p HD output that's fine for YouTube shenanigans and the like. Meanwhile, that triple lens rear camera is unsurprisingly limited, although the Moto G9 Play can still take some decent looking photos in respectable lighting, helped along by those AI smarts. And last up, if your budget really is tighter than a starfish's sphincter, then maybe check out Motorola's Moto E7 instead. It's fresh and new, and at 99 quid, it's one of the cheapest smartphones around. The specs are unsurprisingly proper basic. You get a 6.5 inch HD plus screen, a 4000 milliamp battery, a MediaTek Helio processor backed by just 2 gigs of RAM and a 48 megapixel primary camera, all wrapped up in a colourful splash proof frame. It won't be a smooth everyday sailor but it'll do the job absolutely fine for messaging and your basic everyday tasks like that. Great news if you've already spunked all your cash on Christmas plonk. And sadly I haven't had the chance to personally play with the Modo E7 myself just yet but I'm hoping to get one on the go soon for a full unboxing review and all of that good stuff. So that's my roundup of the very best Motorola smartphones that you can grab yourself right now on a budget from absolutely crazy mental amounts of money all the way down to just 99 quid. You can check out my unboxings and reviews of these smartphones right here on Techspert. Please do let me know your own thoughts if you've been using the Motorola smartphone this year. How has your experience been? And please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell if you haven't done so 
Alrighty, and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.